Bless you, Jesus. I want to thank our pastor, Pastor Kola Oli. He has been so wonderful. God bless you, sir. I want to thank you, Mr. God bless you, my sister. And all the pastors and the ministers, you people have been so wonderful. Honestly, I just feel like I'm assuring you I'll be coming there tonight. If they did send me, I will send you. celebration for me. Last Sunday we celebrated our 16th year anniversary at the headquarters in London and it was wonderful. Yesterday was my birthday. So they took me to Jerusalem yesterday for the first time. And it was so wonderful. So I'm so happy and the choir just kind of up. Uh, my wife and my wife knows that it's they true that I make my own record. Amen. And one of the songs I was singing in my bathroom this morning was what they are singing. So you can see that I'm just at home. Praise the Lord. I know the Lord will bless you today. This anniversary is going to be a unique one. Pastor has said it, look out for it. And the Lord of heaven shall bless you in Jesus' name. I am praying for somebody that can say a better amen. amen. That which you have been praying for, receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand up and begin to glorify the name of the Lord. Let's worship His Majesty. He is the King of Glory. The I am that I am the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Worship His Majesty. Oh, give Him praise and give Him honor. Thank you, Eshala. Thank you, Aduna. Blessed be Your holy name for we worship. You.
are moving from suffering to glory. Yeah. Therefore, anything that has been detaining you in your suffering, today by the power in the blood of Jesus, be disgraced in the name of Jesus.
now and means to all. Thank you for the beginning. Thank you for where we are right now. Thank you for what you are going to do before we leave here. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise to the Lord. We have some things to do here this afternoon before we go. So because of quickly, I'll take the message away because I want us to have ample time to pray. There are some prayers we are going to pray here because God is taking some people from suffering into their glory. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I say you are among those people that are moving from suffering out to glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So the title of my message is Anointing to Move from Suffering or to where? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm wanting to move from suffering up to where? Glory. Because that is what will happen in your life. Yeah. One thing I want you to know is that you cannot do anything without the anointing. And that is why the Bible said in Acts of the Apostles 10 and 8, it said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus could have done anything without the anointing of Nazareth. Even though he is God, God still needs to anoint him. Because anointing is the empowerment of God. Anointing is able packing you up in whatever thing you are doing. For everything, they will remain where they are until another force is applied to them. When we are going up in science, in physics, it told us that every object remains in a stationary position. Except what? An external force. Don't worry, I know some of us don't know it. But I'm explaining. An external force is what? It's applied. This pulpit will be here unless somebody removes. This will stand unless another force pushes it. This same thing with the situation of your life. Every situation that you find yourself, something pushes you there. Every situation that you find yourself, something is keeping you there. And for you to leave that particular situation, you need another force. Why you see some people remain where they are is because they have not gotten that enough force to take them out of where they are. But I am praying for somebody if your image can be powerful. That force that will take you to your glory. Receive it by fire. 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 What is the anointing? Anointing is power. Everybody say power. 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 Without power, nothing can happen. Without power, things remain ordinary. For something to be extraordinary, there must be power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This mic that I'm speaking with now needs power before it can be its original. Without power, this mic remains anything. Amen. Yeah. In fact, if you like, you can turn it to a monster, you can turn it to anything. Because there's no power. The iron in your house remain powerless without power. If it can never be hot without power. And that is why anointing is that power. And that's why Apostle Paul was telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's begin to read that place, verse 20. He said, For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in what? Or in power. The kingdom of God that we are talking about is not about just words of the mouth. But there is something that is packing that thing up. Beloved, the kingdom of God is not about what I'm telling you now. It's not what I'm saying. It's not about me. There is something that eyes cannot see that is packing it up. That is why every word that shall come out of this place today shall be a blessing unto your life. In the heavens, mother, there shall be a blessing. supported it in chapter 2 of the same first Corinthians. We are going somewhere quickly so that we can pray. He said in verse 4, 1 Corinthians 2, 4. 1 Corinthians 2, 4, Apostle Paul said, And I speak, and I preaching 
was not the enticing words of man's wisdom, but what? In demonstration. In demonstration. Everything I'm saying to you is not enticing you. It's not just to lift you up, but in demonstration of what? Not only that, in demonstration of the Spirit and the power of God. The reason why you are hearing what you are hearing is because it is loaded with the power of God. And that's why we call it the anointed word of God. He said in Romans 1 says, he said, We are not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's what? It's power. The salvation, what makes us Christian, is not ordinary. It's what? It's power. He says, power of God. It's the power of God. So what we are here to get this afternoon is the power to take you from whatsoever so suffering that you are in. And you are coming out of it. Amen. I say you are coming out of it. Amen. I say you shall come out of it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, suffering is not a bad thing. So I used to tell people, praise the Lord. Is it not strange? Suffering is not bad. Praise the Lord. Suffering is not bad. Suffering comes to you to do four things in your life. Praise the Lord. The number one thing that suffering came to do is to perfect you. Amen. Amen. Anytime you are being faced with a situation that you cannot help yourself, he wants to perfect you. Anytime you are faced with a situation that you can't do anything, he's trying to perfect one area of your life. One brother came to me sometimes ago and he was like, Pastor, I don't know why, I don't know, it's as if I don't know how to handle my wife. Every time we are fighting, every time, he said, Pastor, we have not enjoyed this marriage for one hour. That me and my wife, we cannot sit together for one hour. One hour. You are surprised. Some people are like that. Bring that book. Why will I bring the book? <laughs> Why are you sitting there? What concerns you? Say, for one hour, they just, it's as if I don't know how to handle my wife. And I told him, is that your trouble? He said, yes. Then you are not perfect in that area. What are the things that causes it? He said, Pastor, it's as if I get angry easily. I said, that is it. You two stop get angry easily. Men, if you agree with me, is it possible to be an husband without being gentle? You have to be gentle to deal with women. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if somebody does not know how to control himself and want to be a husband. That is why marriage is for men and women, not for boys. And girls. In maturity. Praise the Lord. But what they call maturity? Is it not self-control? Yes. And what is self-control? Is it not to control self? Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When self wants to misbehave, you tell self. <laughs> that is maturity. Praise the Lord. So that suffering, that thing that you are passing through, is coming to do one of the first thing, perfection. So that at the end of that suffering, you are perfected. Some of us have been here looking for papers. So this for a long time, I've tried all my best. You have been perfected. As for today, that suffering is coming to glory. Yeah. You know, without that paper, you learn a lot of things. You learn how to be by yourself. <laughs> 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 
So because when the women they get that big, we are the those supposed to go. That's where you will be finding them. Some of them will live here and go and be fighting for chickens in their village. They are not going to the village, though. But because they have the husband, they believe that when they scatter the village, they won't do. <laughs> but God said, don't worry, I need to teach you how to perfect yourself. So because of that paper, that's why they are sitting at home. The moment they get that paper, they won't sit at home again. God wants to perfect that area. So because of that trouble, they know how to talk to people. Because there's no money there. Praise the Lord. God is trying to perfect. So suffering is coming first. To do what? Perfect. To perfect you. Then the second one is to stabilize you. Many of us are not stable. But in our trouble, we learn a lot of things. Some of us will not be in this church today if not for your problem. Some say, oh, I don't know, this sickness has defied all medication. is to stabilize you. As a child of God, it will never please you. That's why the Bible says everything works together for your good. It didn't say good things are working together for your good. It says everything. So the second work of your tribulation and trial, what you are suffering, is to do what? To stabilize you. Then the third one is to strengthen you. Everyone says strength. Yeah. It is in your trouble that you get strength. Send me somebody that I say, oh, I can withstand everything. It's because he or she has went through something before in life. Somebody that has never suffered in life and never withstand anything. Because strength in life is not what in the paper. You can't go and read one book and say, yes, I have read the book. I am strong. No. I remember when we first came to London and then the gates came. And one of our pastors called and said, Pastor, the gate is going to be in London. I said, fine. Said, let's go, let's go. I said, we go. And as I was trying to go, he said, uh, we we'll pay 1,500. I said, 1,500 naira or what? He said, pounds. I said, sorry, I'm not going to pay. He said, sir, there's nothing he wants to tell us that we don't know. The problem is that we have not put our own into practice. He gets went through his own suffering. But when people come out on the podium, they will only tell you success story. Nobody will tell you suffering story. Oh, by the time I put this together, it just work like this. It doesn't work that way. Many a times when you have one plus one, sometimes it becomes one. And sometimes you have one plus one, it becomes zero. Total is zero. And you'll be looking for where's the one. Has it not happened in business? Yes, Some of all that are business people here. How many times have you put all your money into a business and you can't find one thing? One thing. So oh, I've had it one plus one. It's supposed to be two. But eh, not even is there a minus. You are even going. And many run from their country because they are going. That trouble will become your testimony. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Anyone that is sitting down here and you are going somebody in far countries, Malibros ke Pori Kaseya today, ever pay that debt? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. if the congregation can help you in your name, ever pay that debt? Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So that we strengthen you. And the last thing that that thing is coming to do, that affliction is to set to you. Yeah. Everybody say, I'm set to you. I'm set to you. All these things that I'm telling you, it's not in my own world. It's what the word of God told us. It's what I just don't belong when I was sitting down here. 
according to your team. Let's go there. Let's see First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter five, verse ten. I mean First Peter. Sorry, First Peter. Sorry, I love Corinthians. That's why right. I don't want to leave there. <laughs> First Peter, one five. I mean, verse five. I mean, chapter five, verse ten. Bless you. First Peter five ten. But God. the God, God bless you, sir. Yes. But the God of all grace. God of how many grace? All grace. All grace. Who ah. has called us unto His eternal glory? He has already given us the glory by Christ Jesus. Where you ought to be is already inside of you. Amen. What you are waiting for is the manifestation. And that's why I used to tell people, it's not what you see in me now that is me. I may not have got in my own car now. Please let me preach this place. I may not have got in my own house now. I may not even have money to feed myself. That is not the real me. Because the real me is called into glory. And the Bible says, eyes have not seen what I can manifest, no eyes have ever seen it. So if you are judging me by what I have now, you are just you are missing the point. I can be anything. So far is good. I might be the next millionaire that you have been waiting for. Because I have been called into how many glories are? Oh, 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 as many. It's a blank check. Feel anything that you want. Can you continue, sir? After that. After that. Yeah, listen. Yeah, so when God has loaded you with everything, ah. look at it. He showed us during creation. He created everything before he did. After that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so far the why. You have to suffer. So Weeping have to endure. Amen. Amen. Some people say, which one is this? Sorry for that. But that's what I have from the spirit of a woman. Which one is this? Man? So far for a while. In fact, Corinthians call it light affliction. Light affliction. But let us be sincere that is it light? But I would call it light because it's comparing it to the glory that is inside of you. And that's why I used to tell Christian, don't because of what you are going through now, destroy yourself. You are more than who you are. Oh, because somebody wants to give me things and I have to sleep with that person. No, don't just keep yourself. You are too big for that. Oh, because I want to get this, I have to lie. No. It is too cheap. You are bigger than that. How many times have you turned Satan down and you came out to be stronger? Hallelujah. When he will tell you that, oh, if you can do this, you will not be somebody, you will die. Have you died? No. Satan is always a liar. And that is why that sickness inside of you is a lie. Amen. From today, get your healing. Amen. That joblessness is a lie. Get your job yeah. After suffering for a while. Psalm 34, verse 10. Many are the afflictions. For God to give us Suffering for a while. Continue, sir. After suffering for a while, to make you what? Perfect. The first thing, perfection. Number two, it will establish three strength. And number four, it will not be settled. 